Well, it didn't seem five minutes ago that I was making this little H quad out of uh, bits of wood and my broken mini FPV quad. Now, more excitingly, uh, my friend Neil printed me out a new frame. This is the K quad, and it's uh, 3D printed uh, ABS plasticky stuff, and it works really good. So, uh, I just wanted to talk about what I did to build it. So, here's the actual printed components that Neil gave me. We've got two legs that uh, obviously have two legs in each of them, great in the four. Uh, the long bottom plate and the slightly shorter top plate. Uh, the idea of those go together with some risers and we can stick the components in the middle. Um, the first thing we thought about doing was actually putting the battery uh, sandwiched in between the two plates. But I found out my little uh, 1600 milliamp two cells wouldn't fit in either way. So we actually decided to sling the battery underneath and go with mounting all the electronics under the center plate. So this build is much like the H-Quad. Um, I'm using these Turner G1811 motors again, although I decided to go for slightly higher KV 3800s, as on the H-Quad it was just a little bit over that 50%, maybe 60% to get it in hover. So I figured this would bring me back to more of a 50% hover. Uh, so these needed slightly higher ampage on the ESCs. These are plush 10 amps. They're still absolutely tiny. Um, now rather than go ahead and, and soldering up a great big cable as I did last time, um, I found I had this bit of copper strip board over. So what I did is cut out a few little plates to make my own solder pads uh, and started soldering the ESCs onto those. Uh, here's all four of them. And after messing around a bit and seeing if I'd get the ESCs nicely all squished in under the two plates um, and trying it on the arms, I've gone with a kind of half in, half out approach, uh, which gets me them sort of tidied away without really trying to squash them in there. I, I guess they'll, they'll go for cooling a little easier that way. Um, I ordered some smaller risers, so I'm on these 15mm ones. So with all the ESCs wired in and hooked up, it really does give quite a, a nice low profile, so pretty happy with that so far. Just completing the wiring here, adding the uh, the green and blue wire are going to go to the KK2.1 board and the uh, XT60 obviously for the battery there. Uh, then just reprogrammed the ESCs slightly so they're, they're on NIMH style batteries instead of LiPo so they don't cut off. Uh, and then put the rest together. Uh, once again I'm using uh, an Emotion RC 600 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz transmitter um, with a, a lovely skew antenna supplied by Big Nose 13. I've got the KK, the new KK 2.1 board um, which has the advantage of not having to solder in anything for the LiPo alarm and I'm using CPPM again to one of these little Freestar, um, FreeSky D4R2 receivers. Uh, and that's it kind of hooked up with just the little bits to tuck away, the, the antenna leads there and the um, the alarm, or the little piezo buzzer from the KK. And this is it, just next to my other quad, all ready to go. Now we've been having some really rubbish weather over Christmas here in the UK. So the uh, first hover I did was actually in my little man cave here. I just really wanted to see if it would take off and and essentially work. There was some thought about some flex in the arms uh, being an issue, but really it's no more flexible than a normal DJI arm for a 450. Uh, as you can see here, it takes off, doesn't look too wobbly and it hangs around okay, so that said to me, it's, it's good enough to go for some tuning. So all I had to do is, is wait for a day that it wasn't blowing 70 mile an hour wind and bucketing it down with rain to have a little tune-up session in the garden. What amazed me about this first flight is that on the default uh, PID settings on the KK2.1 this thing was actually flying pretty nicely. Um, on the previous small quads I've had I've really had to mess around a lot with the settings to get it flying even relatively well. And this might be the difference on the KK2.1. I think it's got a, a different all-in-one six-axis gyro chip or something. Maybe it's a little bit better. 
Uh, but I didn't really have to do too much with it. I felt there was a little bit of wobble. So I tuned down the roll gain. I increased the stick scaling because I thought it was a little bit too soft as I bashed the sticks around. Um, and I decided to go with that. You'll see a lot of strange uh, moving around of the quad here as I'm really bashing the stick in all directions just to make sure I'm happy with the way it's handling and I'm not picking up any real wobble or, or vibration. I also stuck um, my 808 camera on it and got some footage from that just here. You can see it's, um, it's not perfect stuff but there's absolutely no dampening here and to get that sort of result the first flight off, off a quad like this, especially the fact I'm using old props that I shouldn't be because they were crashed on and have little stress marks and nicks out of them um, really does, does bode well for future flights. What amazes me even more is the auto level settings. Uh, previously, again, on small quads, auto levels been like flying through treacle. I flicked into auto level and it was pretty much spot on. I ramped it down, again, maybe 10 points from its defaults. Um, and what was different this time is it actually allowed me to move the quad around quite quickly uh, to relatively good angles uh, and would come back to center really nicely. Uh, before that, I've, it's gone auto level okay, but it's been so sluggish. Um, so yeah, happy, happy. All I had to do now is again wait for another half decent day to try and FPV it. So here's the FPV Maiden and it's reasonably late in the afternoon, the sun is dropping down so it's not the best time to fly. Uh, but we just found a, a small patch of recreational ground close to uh, home which is a little bit of a small field and, and very muddy. But it worked just to test things out. Um, and straight away I noticed it was, it was looking pretty good, um, slow speeds anyway. As I sort of sped up the, the sort of buffering of the wind and any slight wind would cause a bit more of a wobble. So I think there's a little bit more tuning to be done on the roll gains there. Um, but my, my instant thought was, aside from the fact I couldn't see where I was going in the sun, that it was feeling pretty nice. One useful thing about flying here is I took my wife and daughter with me and she was available to capture a few external shots as I flew on by. So expect a few of these just cut into this footage. <laughs> Whoa. You know, you could actually the only real problem was because uh, the sun was falling behind the horizon and it was rapidly getting darker I really didn't have much time to fly so I only flew two um, 1600 milliamp hour batteries and they lasted about six minutes each before we start getting the warning beeps from the KK 2.1. Um, but it, it got me enough uh, feeling to, to, to sort of feel I was confident with it and, and what needed to be changed. I didn't, what I didn't have was enough time to go back and start fiddling with it and reflying and reflying, which would have been really nice. But I mean, you can see here the sort of the darkness you get from the camera as you're heading towards That's stuff. Pretty, you're flying uh, into so the mainly sun I just flew around and did some circles. Uh, but I had a ball of a time doing it, I have to say. It, uh, it reacts really nicely around the corners wow, and it seems to shift along quite nicely in the straights and you can get down low and uh, really have a ball with it. The only thing I didn't really do is, is mess around trying any aerobatics or anything. I thought to uh, save those for a day where I won't actually sink into the mud if I do crash at some point. I was desperately trying to read what the sign said through my fat sharks and I just couldn't make it out. I could barely make it out through the HD here. Um, so that's not too bad, but something to, uh, to look at anyway as I was flying around. The, uh, the 600 uh, milliwatt transmitter is absolutely fine. It, you can go down really low, a good few hundred meters, um, you know, reasonably far out and have a, a really nice signal. No complaints at all there. I'd spent about uh, five minutes trying to find a reasonable 
decent patch of grass that wasn't absolutely waterlogged to take off from. Uh, and I couldn't spot that then coming back from the air, so I decided to put it in the car park uh, in the disabled bay. I didn't have a sticker on the quad for a disabled user. Um, luckily there was nobody there to uh, tell me off. And that whole landing captured expertly once again from my wife. That'll do yet. So there you go. Isn't 3D printing a wonderful thing? Um, there are a few more things to do with this. Obviously the camera at the moment as I said, is just sitting on the plate, so that's going to get some sort of damping in. Uh, long term, uh, I'd really like to try out one of the, the Mobius cameras, so I might swap this 828 out. The other thing to do is swap over these props. You can probably see here this little white mark that uh, suggests this prop's been in a, a crash, which it has done, and all of them are looking a, a, a bit dodgy. So that's something to take out. And then it's just a case of flying it and doing some more tuning. So I'm really hoping, once the weather picks up here, to, to really get out and really fly this thing, fly the hell out of it, really. Get a, a whole box of lipos and, and just go for it, because it's really great fun. It's completely portable, and it just goes on the fat shock. So more to come, hopefully. See you soon.